Tell me something. How many times have you tried to wait until the perfect moment to finally take the leap? Or chase after that girl or that guy just to scare them away? Or fill up your schedule to get more done just to feel like you're more stuck than ever? Well, for one, know that you're not alone because I have struggled with all of those things quite a bit in my 20s. And just for reference, I'm 28 years old and I'm about to be 29 next month, so we're getting closer to the 30 year mark and I'm fucking excited, but that's another story. Uh, but everything in this video that I'm about to share with you is literally what I wish somebody would have told me years ago because I didn't have to go through all that struggle and that self-sabotage and just the self-destruction that was my 20s. So in this video, I'm gonna share with you seven paradoxical lessons that I learned throughout my 20s that has taught me so much about life. And I mean it when I say that this is everything that I needed to hear just two years ago, just one year ago. So in a way, I guess I'm making this for my younger self because I, for one, know all of the struggles that I went through, just the amount of self-sabotage, the amount of beating myself up, the self-doubt that I constantly dealt with, the just overcomplication of things. And I know somebody out there is going through similar things, especially if you're a creative, an entrepreneur, an freelancer, or simply just somebody who wants to better themselves through self growth. Now, ever since I've learned these lessons, I'm not saying that life has been easy, but I have been able to handle the ups, the downs, the ebbs and flows, the approvals, the rejections, the successes, the failures, all of that stuff with more grace, compassion, and just a deeper understanding. And that's what I want for you. That's why I'm making this video because I don't want you to deal with that unnecessary self-sabotage. I want you to focus on what matters to you to just be consistent and to live a life that really is meaningful to you, that isn't perfect, but we're able to see the beauty in the dark and the light, the ups and downs, all of it. So to kick things off, I just wanna talk a little bit about where I was three, four years ago. So right around that time it was COVID. There was a lot of uncertainty. I think we can all agree to that. But I was really struggling with the meaning of life. I didn't really understand exactly what to do with my life because prior to that moment when COVID happened, I was pursuing freelance in photography and filmmaking. I was shooting weddings. I was shooting stuff for small businesses and I didn't feel fulfilled by it. And I thought that I had it figured out uh, when I was 21 years old and I started pursuing all this stuff. So whenever I reached that age, roughly 24, 25, when COVID happened, I was like, is this really it? Do I really it, like, is this really what I want to do with my life? Because if I break my leg, I don't know if I'm going to be able to make money. And I don't like that thought. So there was a lot of uncertainty and I didn't know how to handle uncertainty before this, everything kind of fell in my lap. And that was mainly because I was exposing myself to people who were interested in my services through college, through uh, my relationships that I was building in college, through fraternity, Greek life, etc. For those who don't know, I was in I was in Pi Kappa Alpha. Everybody's so like alarmed when they find out I was in Greek life. But yes, I was in Greek life. And uh, I'm thankful for it because it gave me like a crash course on the real world. It exposed me to a lot of people who were in relationships, were graduating, needed photos, um, later getting into weddings, and then later going into entrepreneurship. And so the connections served me well up until COVID happened. So when all this uncertainty hit me, I was like, okay, Let's see what this uncertainty is about. <laughs> As months went on, I quickly became best friends with self-sabotage. And before this, I didn't even know what that was. But I was just so uncomfortable. Like, I can remember the way I used to feel. Just the struggle of what the fuck do I do with myself? With my time, with my goals, with, with my business? Like, I just didn't understand. And so anytime I would pushed towards something and I didn't get the expectation that I was hoping for. I didn't get the love, I didn't get the, the views, I didn't get the likes. I thought I was a problem. And, and now granted, yes, we always have areas that we can improve. But when we say that we are the problem and we go too far down the rabbit hole of taking responsibility, 
It's great to take extreme ownership, but to the point where you start beating yourself up, making your own life more miserable, getting in your own way, stopping yourself from to do the next step, that is what self-sabotage is. We can say that we didn't hit a certain benchmark that we wanted and how can we do better? And that's healthy. But when we say we didn't hit an expectation, we didn't hit a benchmark and I'm the problem or everybody thinks I'm stupid or my family thinks I'm dumb, uh, I wasn't made out for this, that's when it doesn't serve you. Do you see the difference? There's two differences. And the worst part about this whole process is because I was so uncertain, I was seeking advice from a million fucking people, from creators, from other entrepreneurs, from who fucking knows who. I was just desperate. So I'd follow one person's advice, go that way and realize that I didn't like it or it wasn't my path or I just wasn't happy doing it. Then I'd come straight back to where I started and I'd follow somebody else's advice. And I would repeat the process <laughs> over and over and over and over for fucking years. I'm not kidding you. I literally was so stuck. I just kept going in a vicious cycle until I realized these seven lessons. And the first lesson is that uncertainty equals freedom. Let me explain. When you walk into new territory, there are endless possibilities, which means that you have the freedom to choose whichever path and make the most of it. Where there lies possibility, there lies freedom. The moment you are certain about things or feel like you are certain about things is the moment you've hit your glass ceiling. By seeking certainty, ultimately you are pitching for stagnation. If things are stagnant, you will get bored. So realize that standing in the middle of the forest and not knowing which direction to go means that there's so much room for self-growth, for self-discovery, for a new path. There's so much to be explored and there's something exciting about that, right? Like if we had everything figured out, life would be boring. And truth be told, life is always changing. We're always changing. We're changing. Our conditions are changing. The world is changing. Everything is changing. And the more that we can just embrace the fact that the only constant in life is change, the more we can dive into the freedom of uncertainty and just realize that absolutely nothing in life is certain. Like tomorrow is not certain. I don't know if I'm going to be alive tomorrow you don't know that you're going to be alive tomorrow. We might believe and think that we are going to be alive tomorrow, but it's not certain. Nobody says, yeah, you're guaranteed tomorrow. That's why it's so beautiful to just take every day as it is and, and appreciate the moment and roll with what you got. It's a blessing to be alive, to be sitting here for me talking to this video or to this camera. It's all a blessing. The second paradoxical lesson that I learned is that absolutely nothing in life is a coincidence. I'll let that sit for a sec. Nothing in life is a coincidence. Of course, in retrospect, when we look back, it's like, oh yeah, you know, that happened for this reason, right? Like, I'm sure you can think of a moment in your life where you went through some mad fucking pain and now you look back and you're, you're grateful for it. Even though you felt like your life was doomed and that there was no hope. Look at you now. You learned something new. You have grown. You have earned new opportunities new relationships, new friendships, and that's fucking beautiful. Everything happens for a reason. And the more that you can reflect on moments in, in your past that you're grateful for in moments where it was painful and you, you're like, fuck, I wish it didn't happen, but now you appreciate it, that can help you take on the current challenges of your life and realize that because I lost this client, this new door is opening, right? Or because I lost this client, Maybe it's an opportunity for me to look inward and learn something new about myself. Or because I lost this client, maybe it's time to look under the rug and see what I've been sweeping under there. Life is always happening for you, not to you. And my AC is coming on, so hold on. I turned my AC up to 75 because I didn't want the AC to come on, make the and it fucks with the audio just a little bit. Um, and it's already getting over 75 degrees in here. That's how you know it's hot in Texas. Whew, loud days. So the next paradoxical lesson that I learned is that in order to accomplish more of your goals, you have to do less, not more. So 
Do less to accomplish more. We've all heard the analogy, don't spread yourself thin. So it's important to ask yourself, what matters? For me, what matters? If I could narrow it down to five things, I would say my well being, my relationships, fitness, business, and content. That just came off the top of my head, so I might change that, but that's the first thing that comes to mind. And the reason why I started with myself is because we have to fill our own cup up first in order to allow others to receive the overflow. If we don't fill up our own cup, then we're giving people a half full version of ourselves, which is a disservice to both ourselves and to other people. Side tangent there, but to accomplish more, you've got to do less. If I want to grow a YouTube channel, I should focus on YouTube, right? I shouldn't be making content for every single platform for TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, blah, 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 every single day, right? I'd be spreading myself thin. So in a way, by me focusing on one content idea for the week, doing less helps me accomplish more in the long run. Because to me, YouTube is the most important platform in, for me to spread my message, to share my level of impact, etc. I just realized it got dark in here. Hold on. And that to me is my priority. It's long format content because I'm able to sit with you and really express my thoughts on a deeper level. Whereas with short form, you would have already swiped up to the next dopamine hit. And that's why I love YouTube, but that's another story. How many times do I, why do I keep saying another story? <sighs> but I think this, and I think this explains itself. If you want to accomplish more in life, ask yourself what truly matters, what is going to make the biggest impact over a 10 year run? And how can I stop doing other things that are distracting me and focus on what matters? For you, it's not YouTube, maybe it is YouTube, whatever it is, just ask yourself, where am I spreading myself thin? Where am I wasting time and energy and it's not serving me? Or where am I putting energy in a place that's not giving me the return on investment that I'm looking for? And I don't know if you've ever heard about a book called The One Thing, but that's basically what this is talking about. In the book, uh, highly suggest it, is the first book that I, self-development book that I ever read and it changed everything for me. And basically what it is, is prioritizing the one thing that matters. You start every single day with the one thing. And if you get that one thing done, the day is a success. Everything else, like admin, taking the trash out, cleaning up the place is just secondary work. It doesn't equal a successful day. But you getting this one thing done, making that YouTube video for the day, makes the day a success. But you have to ask yourself, what am I prioritizing for in order to realize what the one thing is? So go check that book out. It's a really awesome book and I, I believe that any person that reads it will gain a lot of value from it. The next paradoxical lesson is one that I never expected to learn. And I first heard it with a past client of mine. It was a content idea that she had and it really resonated with me and it stuck with me ever since. And that is sometimes you have to slow down to speed up. Three years ago, when I faced a roadblock, I would have felt like I needed to get push on the gas throttle 10 times harder. Let's fucking send it. Fuck everything else. Let's just focus balls to the wall until I would reach a point where I just couldn't tolerate myself. I would self-destruct. I would feel like nothing is working and I would, in a way like me speeding up or smashing the gas throttle was a distraction. And it was a distraction because I felt like that's what I needed to do. When really, all the moments that I felt like I had a breakthrough were in moments where I slowed down. You ever heard that saying that sometimes you have to be broken down in order to break through or experience a breakdown in order to break through? I feel like in order for you to break through, you have to give yourself time, space, and energy to yourself to process those things and to really get clear on you know what just happened and to not throw your emotions under the rug because your emotions are giving you signs they're giving you clues and they're very useful when you listen to them a few examples that i can think of in the past whenever i did try to speed up instead of slowing down was oh 
my TikToks aren't doing great. Let me let me speed it up. Let me make three more every week instead of making four every week. Let me make seven and just bump up the volume. And then I just found myself like making stuff that I wasn't proud of and really just seeking other people's validation. I don't think that served me, you know? Another example I can think of is doing cold outreach. I felt like, oh my God, I'm so desperate. Let me cold outreach and really just try to speak to everybody under the sun. And a few things happened. One, because I was trying to speak to everybody on the sun, under the sun, my offer wasn't very attractive. Two, my desperacy showed <laughs> and that didn't serve me. And I just ultimately realized that that wasn't my cup of tea when it comes to attracting clients, which leads me to my next point, which is to attract, don't chase. This has been a hot topic for me this year. Let me tell you, oh my God, this has been such a fucking harsh lesson to learn. It, this applies to every single thing because the moment you start chasing, the moment you're like, please answer this phone, please become my client, please take my business, please, 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 is the moment that you push those people away. People can feel when you are needy. So in a way, by forcing things, you're actually repelling things. So instead, my suggestion is to become the type of person that people can't ignore. Become the type of service provider that your ideal clients cannot ignore. They, they need your services. They see the value because you're being so aligned with who you are and your value and your potential that they want a piece of it right? Do the work and attract them first. Or on the flip side, become the type of husband that your future wife wants to be with. And if you don't know where to start with this, get crystal clear on exactly what you want out of your relationships, business, content, etc. And then reverse engineer exactly what that type of person is attracted to. Once you have at least a little bit of clarity on that, then you can focus on self growth. Focus on being a better service provider. Focus on going to the gym to be more attractive to that partner, potential partner. Or focus on therapy and unpack the things that might be getting in your way from your childhood, right? There's so many ways that you can go about doing this, but reverse engineer, attract, don't chase. It'll always serve you, I promise you. And it's something I'm currently practicing but it is so important in anything in life. Attract, don't chase. Don't chase, just stop chasing. It ain't for you, it ain't for me, it ain't for you, it ain't for nobody, <laughs> just attract. The next paradoxical lesson that I learned is to start before you're ready. <laughs> in my mid twenties, I thought I had to have everything figured out in order to take action. I had to have this location, this time, this, idea this person all planned out before taking the first step and the truth is is that's just going to keep you stuck it kept me stuck and it didn't serve me whatsoever that plan never even worked out the plan never goes as planned tell me one plan in life that has ever gone as planned <laughs> so the point here is to be flexible right yes take the time to plan ahead do your best to you know write the script, write the outline, write the points, write the quotes you wanna bring up, write the points you wanna mention, right? But be flexible. Be flexible with where things go, with the conditions, with people's emotions, feelings, the people's moods. There, there's so many factors, and this is exactly why you can't have the perfect plan. There is no perfect plan. So you might as well make a rough plan, take your first step, learn along the way, be flexible, pivot when you need to, and have some grace whenever things don't go exactly as you wanted. The first perfect moment was yesterday and the next best moment is today. So just take action. You're gonna learn so much about yourself along the way and that's what matters. None of the other stuff. Now the final paradoxical lesson that I learned throughout my 20s is that the moment you stop caring is the moment you find your power. So if you're standing in the middle of a forest and you don't know where to go, well, you've got to aim for some direction, right? So let's say you go north. You're like, I'm going north, that, that, that feels like the right way. I expect that to be the right way. So you go north and you spend four to five hours walking north. 
then you realize you find a sign or something that indicates you're going the opposite direction. What do you do in that moment? Do you see that and you stand still, you look down at your shoes and you start self-destructing, calling yourself stupid, wishing that you were better and ultimately just like making yourself feel like shit? Or do you say, okay, now I know that north is not the direction, it's south. So I'm gonna turn around and I'm gonna walk south. What is the difference between the two? On one hand, you self-sabotage, you make yourself feel like shit, and chances are you probably sit down, you feel stuck, and you don't take action. And it's because you were attached to the outcome. While on the, on the flip side, oh, this isn't the direction. I'm gonna go back the other way because I know that by me going that way, I'm gonna reach my goal, right? So having expectations can help us reach our goal, but it can also cause unnecessary stress and anxiety when we don't hit that goal. So what if you just said, I'm gonna, I'm gonna attach myself to the process, not the outcome. Step by step by step, I'm gonna make progress towards my goal. Yes, I'm gonna face failure. Yes, I'm gonna have moments where, oh, I'm going the wrong direction. <laughs> and what if you could literally be so detached from the results that you just turn around and start walking in that direction. Like imagine how peaceful life would be if you could be able to do that. And that's why detachment is one of the seven spiritual spiritual laws of success inside uh, Deepak Chopra's book, Seven Spiritual Laws of Success. It's so important to be detached because what I used to do is when I didn't hit my goal, I would just literally start beating myself up and then I would feel no sort of motivation or inspiration or motive to make the next video. And yes, we can't rely on motivation and that's exactly why. But if I'm gonna get in my own way, who is that hurting? Me, my last video didn't perform well. <laughs> this is a perfect example. And instead of self-destructing thinking that I was a problem, I'm looking at that as, okay, where did I fall short? You know, like, how can I learn from this? Maybe. Maybe it just wasn't that good of an idea. Or maybe I could have taken a little more, taken a little more time to plan out the outline. Or I could have really focused on making a better hook for the video. But I'm not gonna sit there and call myself stupid. I'm just gonna be like, yeah, you kind of missed that one. You were walking north when you should have went south. <laughs> and the reason why I saved that for last is because I think that is one of the most important lessons. And maybe it's just because it's a hot topic for me right now, but being detached from the outcome is gonna serve you so well. Yes, take the results and look at them and analyze them, but don't attach your well-being, your self-worth, or just who you are as a person to that. You are not that video. You are you. You made that video, it doesn't mean you are that video. And I think some of us, we, we, th we think that we are the things that we create or the things that we work on. And so that's why we self-sabotage and think that we are the problem. When ultimately life is just throwing trials and tribulations at you so that you can challenge yourself to grow. Mistakes happen for a reason and this is why nothing is a coincidence. Imagine a life where it's just super easy going, there's no problems, no mistakes, you just have it all figured out, everything's perfect, you know exactly what to do, when to do it, and how to do it. Like. Do you ever think about that? Like that would literally destroy the meaning of life because it's through all the suffering that we go through that we find purpose in life, that we discover exactly who we are. Pressure makes diamonds, baby. I truly believe that. And so I hope that, you know, all these lessons in this video can, sh can remind you of that and give you a better tool moving forward when it comes to doing hard things, going to the gym, creating the business, um, doing your nine to five or just simply helping people you know like there's so many beautiful things about life and especially those painful moments like have taught us so much about ourselves and we can be choose to be grateful for them for both the past ones and the future ones the ones that happen today easier said than done and i'm not saying to just throw your emotions under the rug but it, realize that in the back of your mind while you're processing those emotions that this is happening for a reason 
And as cliche as it is, we know that things happen for a reason. I will even go as far to say that we experience loss in life and that serves us for a bigger purpose because whenever I lost my dad, it inspired me to carry forward his impact that he made on me. Whenever my stepfather passed away, it inspired me to focus on relationships and really creating a good experience for those people around us. So with every dark comes a light, with every bad comes something good. I struggled so much throughout my 20s and maybe that was my purpose so that I could share this with you. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you'd like to connect, you can reach out to me on Instagram at Ashton T. Joe. Shoot me a DM. I'm always happy to connect with you guys. And if you enjoyed this video, you'll also enjoy this one. At least I think so. So go check that out and I'll see you there. Much love. Bye. Thank you.